Hi everyone, welcome to the R Markdown series.、Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about how to insert R code chunks and how to manage chunk options. So I created a new R Markdown file and removed the default content. So now let's see how to insert R code chunks. There are three options. The first one is to use the Insert button in the Editor toolbar over here. And so this little green button, click arrow, and click R. So in our class, we only insert R、uh, code. You can also have other options. For example, you can even insert Python code in R Markdown. So let's choose this one, and immediately. So this、uh, code chunk is shown in your R Markdown file, and we can type some code here. For example, define two variables. Right. And then calculate x times y.、Right. And after we insert this code chunk, and we think this little task、uh, is done, we can test the code by clicking this little green arrow here. So this one will only run this chunk, and immediately you can see the result. So we can also knit the file. Since there is no error in the code chunk. Uh, we are confident that the R Markdown file can be knitted successfully. Okay, so see, this is the R Markdown file with one R code chunk.、Okay. Another way to insert an R code chunk is to use a keyboard shortcut.、Uh, for Windows system, you can use Control plus Alt plus I, and for MacBook, you can use Command Alt and I. So、for example, I can use my keyboard, Control Alt I, and then I have an empty code chunk. Similarly, I can just type them directly. Pay attention; these are not regular quotes in the keyboard. These are back tick. So it is on the upper left corner below the Escape key. All right. Um, we can do the following. I just type tick tick tick. And curly bracket R, and then change line and tick tick tick, and we're done.、Okay. So three ways. All right. Now let's talk about chunk options.、Okay. Uh, there are actually、uh, many more options than this list,、uh, but I think these are the most important ones that everyone needs to know. So let's talk about them. First, chunk evaluation. Okay, chunk evaluation. So、uh, suppose you have a code chunk and you don't want to evaluate it. You just want to show it. Okay, maybe there is an error in the chunk and you couldn't figure out. Yeah,、uh, you can、uh, set evaluation equals false.、Okay? So by default, it is true. So set it to be false. Then let's knit it and see what happens. So see, the code is shown here, but no calculation is done. So it is not evaluated.、Uh, the second option is echo. So this one is used to control whether or not you want to show your code. So by default, it is true. So by default, the code will be shown、uh, in the output. And、uh, this one, pay attention, only controls whether or not the code will be displayed, but it will not control whether or not the code will be evaluated.、Okay. So let's see. Echo equals false. Choose false.、Okay. Now let's see what happens. So only the result is shown. So the output of this R chunk is just x times y, which is fifty. However, the entire code chunk is omitted.、Okay. Sometimes it's very useful,、uh, especially when you create some、uh, plots. And maybe you use a very long program to create a plot, and you want to omit、uh, that tedious part, and only want to show the plot. Then you can use echo equals false. 
Okay, but the code is still evaluated, and the last set of options are about text output. So by default, uh, if there is anything wrong, R may give you some warning message, but the code can still continue. Okay, let's see one example. Okay, let me insert some R code. Okay, let's define two vectors. So a equals one to ten, and b equals one to three. Okay, and let's multiply a and b together. Okay, so if we run this, you see there is a warning message printed. Longer object length is not a multiple of shorter object length. Okay, although there is a warning message, uh, the program is not stopped. Okay, because uh, it's not that crucial. Okay. So if we need it, you see the warning message is shown in your output. Okay. If you don't want to show the warning, you can set warning equals false, so that the warning message will be omitted. Okay, so the warning is gone. So whenever there is a warning message, the program can still proceed. Okay. What if there is an error? For example, let's just type hello world directly here. Okay. For beginners, it's very natural to type some text in an R code chunk directly, and we know that R cannot accept this kind of input, right? You see immediately, you see already see this uh, cross here. That means it doesn't work. Okay, let's try to knit it. Okay, you see there is an error. Okay, and the program stopped. Okay, and your R markdown file cannot be knitted because of this error. Okay, if you really want your R markdown to be knitted, no matter what. Okay, even if there is an error involved in your R code, you still want to get some output. In that case, you can use the error option okay, to allow errors in your um, code. So error equals true means uh, you allow error in your R code. And of course, the message will be printed. The error message will be printed. You see the result. Okay. So the code is shown, and the error message is shown. And this is a way to uh, sort of show some errors in the code. For example, for teaching purpose, somehow. Okay. And by default, error is false. Oh, sorry, the slide is wrong. Um, so there is a typo here. Okay. Default value is false, actually. Okay. Default is false. Um, originally in neat R, the default value is true. However, when neat R is built in R Markdown, uh, the default value of error become false. Okay, so this is error. So the next chunk option is message. Okay, so this is a very general option. Uh, if you want to suppress the message that is printed by R Markdown, you can just set message equals false. Okay. And for example, warning message, error message, or message about loading a package. All of these are messages. You can uh, choose to suppress them using message equals false. Okay, let's see one example. Let's load a package called tidyverse. Okay, let's run it. Okay. So since tidyverse actually includes a lot of different packages, some message is printed out for you directly okay, whenever you load this package. So in the R Markdown output, if you want to omit this message because it's useless, uh, you can choose to suppress them using message equals false. Okay, then you need it. Okay. So you see the package is loaded, but the message is gone. And last one is include. Default value is true. So this controls whether to include the chunk output in the output document. If false, nothing will be written into the output document, but the code is still evaluated. Let's see one example. Okay. So let's insert one code chunk. 
Okay, and suppose I want to plot some uh, normal random numbers. And I don't want to include the output of this chunk uh, in the output document. Then I can do the following. Include equals false. So if you click this green arrow, you see that uh, nothing happened. But actually the code is run, is evaluated. Just the output is not shown. Okay, let's knit it. Okay, so see the entire chunk is not in the output. Okay. The output is not there, the code is also not there. So everything is gone. It's hidden in the R markdown file. And one more thing, uh, you see that uh, we can load packages in R markdown, but never install packages in an R markdown file because you will have trouble. And there is a principle when you create an R markdown file. Uh, that is, you don't want to change other people's computer because one of the purposes of using R markdown is to share your code. Uh, with other people. Uh, but if you share your code and there is installed uh, packages, including R Markdown, uh, it will actually change other people's computer. And in principle, this is not a good practice. All right, uh, I think that's all for this video. Next time, I'm going to uh, talk more about plot, okay? uh, creating plots in R Markdown file and how to control uh, chunk options whenever there is a plot uh, created by that chunk. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.